Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the PowerUp FT22. Now the FT22 is a great collaboration between our friends at PowerUp and Flight Test. Our goal was to make something that could easily accept the PowerUp 4.0 module, but also give you a great flight experience and be able to need a turn, climb, dive, and all the things in between. We're really excited about the F22 because although it's a jet, or although it looks like a jet, it's actually incredibly easy to fly in either a large gymnasium or in your own backyard. Now with this build, we're not only going to show you how to build the F22, but we're also going to show you how to install the PowerUp 4.0 module, tune it, and go out and fly and have a great experience. So let's go ahead and get our materials in order. And speaking of materials, that's going to be a hot glue gun, scissors or a knife, two inch tape, and also three quarter inch scotch tape. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. The first step we're going to be doing with our FT22 is popping out all the pieces, then we're going to go back and identify them for you before we assemble them. So for our components, we have our main body, we have our fuselage, we have our two fins, we have our wing dihedral support, we have the angle guide for our fins, and then we also have our elevator. Take your time and make sure we have all those pieces, and then we're gonna start peeling paper and getting ready to assemble. Now we can go ahead and take aside our two little dihedral gauges here and our fin angle gauges and everything else we're gonna go ahead and peel the paper on. Before we do, one thing I would say is let's go ahead and seal off the seam here where our normal kit is kind of folded over. Let's go ahead and just put a thin bead of glue down. Notice I'm avoiding that center section. Then we can just take a scrap piece of foam that we have left over from our kit and we can scrape it out. If you haven't done already, it may not be a bad idea just to go ahead and cut out the center section so we don't have to end up gluing it in. Give this about 30 seconds to dry. The reason we wanted to do this first is because now when we peel our paper nice and slowly, this seam in the front is going to be nice and clean for us. All that extra glue is going to go away and it's going to look great. No worries if the paper sticks a little bit. You can always come back and take it off. And we're gonna do the same process on the other side. Same process on our tail. I'm just gonna be a little bit careful making sure I don't end up damaging this thin portion of the foam right here. And we'll do our two fins. And lastly, our fuselage. Now typically with our maker foam, the facing paper holds a lot of the strength. In this case, we're gonna be using the tape to bring that strength back, but also preserve the very light nature of this airplane. We're gonna go ahead and take careful note where our score cut is on both sides of the wing. This is where our dihedral is gonna be, and that dihedral is gonna give us a little bit of a self-stabilizing tendency here. To reinforce the bottom of the seam to make sure that after crash after crash, this plane is still holding up for you, we're gonna reinforce it with a small piece of tape. So our score cut begins here and ends right about here, and that's where we're gonna center up our tape. Now you can use 3 quarter inch scotch tape, or you can use what I prefer is the two inch packaging tape that's really, really thin. So I'm gonna do that right now go and I'm just going to center that up. It's going to just be on the one side of the fin right about there. You can come back with a pair of scissors or in my case a little razor blade. We'll just take off that excess. Same process on the other side. Our next step is to take the tip of either a ballpoint pen, a pencil, or in my case, I love the tip of a barbecue skewer. I'm just gonna carefully drag this right along the score cut, just opening up just a little bit. I only push this down about halfway through the foam, and what I'm looking to do is just make it so it gives a nice, easy crease right on the side here. We wanna go ahead and establish that bend without bending the foam or cracking it, so it naturally holds up at the same angle as our dihedral gauge. Once you're happy with the way it fits, we're going to go down with another piece of tape on the top side to lock in that angle. I 
I just kind of like to roll this up, making sure the bottom surface of the body here is flat. And I'll just work it right up on the wing tip, just like that. And then cut off the excess. You see this gives a really nice joint without any glue and extra weight. Same process on the other side, just lift it up ever so gently. Make sure this naturally just fits under there without fighting too much. Just a little bit more there. So we now have the dihedral established on our wingtips. Let's go ahead and put our attention towards our fins. For our next step here is I'm gonna go ahead and take the tip of, again, a ballpoint pen or something. I'm just gonna kinda of just crush the back edge of this so that when I push this up against it, it naturally just wants to kinda of curve up just a little bit. It doesn't have to curve up too much because that'll be taken care of later in our second step. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of three quarter inch scotch tape and favor in the very top here, I'm gonna kinda of have an exaggerated angle up I'm gonna press it down into place and smooth it out. You're gonna notice that the elevons just naturally wanna angle up a little bit, and that's exactly what we want because the back side of our fin actually has an angle up slightly. So when we press this down into place, it'll automatically give you the exact angle you're looking for. With our elevator taped on the back portion of the F-22 body, we're gonna go ahead and find the angle that angles slightly up. This is most easily found when you lay this flat on the table. You're gonna notice that one tip of the fin is higher away from the table than the other. You're also gonna notice that this length is longer from the tab to the tip of the fin than the other side. So in this case, this is the front of my fin. The back side of my fin, you can see that there's more distance between the table and the tip of the fin. So this will be my back side. So go ahead and identify the back side of both of your fins and then put one on the left side and one on the right side. Just gonna give it a quick test fit. You're gonna notice on our little angle gauge here that we have an arrow that's pointing upwards. We're gonna paint this flat against the table with the arrow pointing up. We'll lay the fin with the tip of the fin pointing backwards, and then we'll simply rest this up against that angle. This is gonna give us a proper angle that we want on our fin. If you wanna make this a little bit easier, you can take the tip of the pen, kind of crush it down like that. There we go. Once you're happy with the way everything fits, we're gonna take our hot glue gun. We're gonna put a thin bead of hot glue right on the bottom of the foam. Same process as before. And we're gonna hold this for about 30 or 40 seconds. If you have any excess, you can always take a scrap piece of foam and wipe off any excess. Extra glue is nothing more than extra weight. Once the glue's dried, we're gonna do the exact same process on the other side. Flatten this out so it accepts an angle nice and easy. Arrow pointing up, quick test fit, everything looks really good. And we're gonna hold this for about 30 or 40 seconds. Now that our fin's on, we're gonna put our attention towards the nose. You can notice that this kind of opens up both on the main vertical piece and the horizontal piece. The way we're gonna slide this in is we're gonna open this up. Slide it through at an angle. And as we push it further and further back, we'll let it naturally just tab into place. To fasten our vertical fuselage, we're first gonna just take about two inch long pieces of tape. We're gonna center that on the vertical portion of the fuselage, then roll it down on each side, pushing it hard up against the corners, and then flat against the wing. This is gonna give us a really nice, clean, but very strong joint. We're gonna space three of these pieces across the bottom of the fuselage, and one on the very top and the back. To give our nose just a little bit more strength, I'm gonna take my hot glue gun. I'm gonna press a little bit of hot glue right into the front seam here, and I'm gonna push the nose shut and then scrape off any excess with a scrap piece of foam or our dihedral gauge. We're gonna hold that shut until it thoroughly dries. So now that we have our Power Up FT-22 here done, we're gonna go ahead and move on and we're gonna put on our Power Up 4.0. For this, we're actually gonna be mounting this inverted upside down like you see here. And we also need to take time to install our vertical mount on the section here pointing straight down. Along with adding our vertical mount pointing down, we're also gonna remove our front clip. There we go. Including in our accessory kit is gonna be two vertical mounts, two horizontal mounts, six screws, landing gear, and also a sliding clip. We're only gonna need this piece. Hold this here, slide this in, there's one, and there's two. We're gonna leave this just slightly loose here so we can adjust this to get it placed right where we want the airplane to be. 
So when mounting our power up 4.0, we're gonna go ahead and first pinch this area right by where we put our tape to mount it. And we're gonna go ahead and push this down right over top. And we're gonna let this little tiny tab that's on the back of our motors right here, kind of press against the back fit. That should get us really close to where our center of gravity needs to be. We're just gonna press this all the way down. There's gonna be a little tap in the front that's gonna kind of crush into the foam and index. And then we can come back with two little pieces of tape to lock it down. There's one. And there's two. Now when we go out to fly this here, we're gonna do a couple important things. We're gonna go ahead and first adjust our elevons to get the proper angle of attack, but we're also possibly gonna be moving our center of gravity back and forth based on how we want to fly and to get to fly the best way possible. So make sure when you go out to fly this that your tape is close in hand because we may actually be moving them slightly forward or backward to get your model to fly perfectly. Another important note to know is you always wanna make sure you select the profile for the FT-22 before you go out and fly it because it is gonna be reversing gyros to get you the proper right and left direction. Now one thing I do want to encourage you to be very careful specifically with the F-22 because it's on the bottom here, make sure you only fly over grass. If you're going to be flying over concrete or asphalt, maybe cut a little scrap piece of foam to kind of glue in front of this antenna so if it goes on the ground it acts as a skid and doesn't hurt your antenna, especially where it comes out of the plastic here. You want to protect your antenna because the antenna is going to be what gives you your signal. At this point, we're ready to take this out and fly it, check our center of gravity, maybe adjust our elevons a little bit, and have a lot of fun. So we have our center of gravity, which like I said before, it's right at the point where the score cuts meet the leading edge. We're happy with that. We have this placed in. Next thing we're gonna do is go fly it. There we go. <laughs> she flies fantastic and I'm sure yours will too. A couple things to point out again. Make sure that you either take a scrap piece of foam, kind of make a little protection here if you're gonna fly over any hard surfaces to protect this antenna from getting hit, or make sure you always land in the grass like I do. Friends, I wanna thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you, Power Up, for the opportunity to design a model around such a cool power system. Also, guys, we wanna see your designs. We wanna see what you guys do with the Power Up 4.0. Make sure you share them so you can inspire others. We'll see you next time.